Hi everyone, welcome to the first unnamed, possibly video podcast that's a joint venture between WWPD and WSS, or should we should we more appropriately say is it Carwansere Publishing? I can't pronounce anything, so. That's pretty good. Uh, pretty close? Pretty close. All right, so with me is Jasper O. That's as far as I'm going to go with that. That's all right. And Guy Bowers. Hi. And this is a truly multinational global affair. So where are you guys located? I'll say. I am in the Netherlands. It's uh, 8 p.m. here, and it's not the same as you. And Guy is in the U.K. somewhere. Yeah, I don't know where you are at the moment, Guy. I'm currently in Plymouth. Plymouth? Yeah. All right. Um, maybe how about seven there? Cool. And I am on the East Coast of the United States. So, uh, yeah, it's a little hard to work this out when it's a, a good time for everybody, but we're we're kind of working through the concept of something that could be cool. We haven't really oh, worked so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we haven't really worked it out yet. We, we don't know how regular it's going to be. We don't know how long it's going to be. We don't know the format yet, but we figure we'll settle into it. So, <laughs> Yeah, just try. Shoot from the hip, as you said. That's right. Sometimes you just got to wing it. So, you know, uh, if any of you guys watching this, feel free to sound off on our forums or shoot us emails or whatever. Exactly. And let us know, you know, what did you like, what didn't you like. Make sure you let us know you really like looking at our mugs, though, because we're some attractive dudes. I mean, in the realm yeah. of miniature gaming, let's It's be not honest. too bad. <laughs> you can do worse. <laughs> yeah. Might be, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, oh, why don't we... Uh, honest guy. <laughs> why don't we all introduce ourselves? So, uh, Guy, why don't you tell us how you got into gaming and what you do nowadays, and just give us the whole the whole uh, whole nine yards. Yeah, no, that's a very long question. Let me see. Um, I suppose I started gaming when I was um, a kid with um, the little toy soldiers, you know, the epic soldiers. Um, Twenty mil, I suppose we call it um, now. Um, and yeah, basically progressed and discovered there was actually rules for these things. Um, it was through a book um, called An Introduction to Wargaming by John Sanders, which I um, popped down to the local uh, bookstore, and it was there cheap, and I picked it up and went, oh, someone's got rules for these things, which I'm, I mess about with on the carpet. Must be when I was about, oh, probably nine or ten. And uh, yeah, so I developed up from there, went on. Um, John Sanders' book was mainly about, um, oh, the Desert War. So I started reading into the subject, um, picked up a copy of Popsky's Private Army, um, which is all about the Long Range Desert Group and, of course, number one demolition routine. And um, yeah, and then my story just sparked from there. Um, got into role playing as well and um, board gaming, and mainly D&D, &D, um, which is something I still do. And um, yeah, it's been um, quite a very strange um, route, really. When I, mean, I started out, um, in um, residential health and social health care. Um, went into um, hospital care as well. And then decided that I had enough of that and decided to um, try writing. Luckily enough, um, I got involved with um, a Warhammer Historical. Um, I was kind enough at the chance to write um, Siege and Conquest. Um, then the then manager of um, Wargame Souls and Strategy, John Kersey, um, invited me to um, well, basically come along and do a few things. A few things ended up to a few more, and then some points, uh, points I was even doing about a third of the magazine. Sure. Um, John um, sadly had to stop um, out, and um, so yeah, I was um, asked to take over. Um, I had a few issues with the um, Spanish, which um, I think I've mentioned before on podcasts and stuff, I won't bother mentioning here. And then um, Jasper kindly came along, and um, yeah, um, basically said, um, do you think that um, buy um, sell the magazine? So um, thankfully they did, and so here I am. So, Very cool. Uh, yeah, there you go. Ta -da! All that in five minutes. That's quite a <laughs> All right, not bad. Got a, a nice intro there. So how about you, Jasper? How, how'd you come to where you are? Where'd you start? Oh, man, I think I explained some of this um, last year in, in the interview with you guys. Right. Um, I was mostly a, 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 a modeler, I suppose, I mean, you know, 35th scale tanks and, uh, and figures, and um, I was actually um, the editor of Ancient Warfare magazine, and I was interested in wargaming. 
uh, and I started Warhammer Ancient Battles about three, four years ago. Um, got into that, and then I noticed on the miniatures page that this magazine called Wargame Soldiers and Strategy was um, no longer published by the Spanish publisher, and I contacted Guy, and um, um, uh, one thing led to another. Yes, <laughs> but about nine months later, we um, hmm, uh, yeah, we had a contract. We, we we didn't have the first issue in nine months, so it wasn't a you know a proper birth and stuff, but. It sure felt like it sometimes. Um, it's actually going to be the third salute this April that I'm going to be at with um, Morgan Soldier and Strategy, and for which I'm I'm now uh, I'm building a samurai castle for our, um, for our demo game. Mm -hmm. And um, Chris, I I saw, you guys posted some samurai on your Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah, we did. We posted. And I've got I've got the, the castle in progress right here. Um, <laughs> it's bloody amazing. It's it's mostly uh, mostly an enormous pile of foam card at the moment, um, which is it, it's actually kind of awesome stuff to con construct stuff out of. Hmm. Um, except I found that you know, I don't know if you can tell. Do you see those sort of stones that are drawn mm -hmm. on awesome. on it? Yeah, th this you know the card stuff you can you can laboriously uh, peel off the paper from like one or both sides and you can basically inscribe it oh my god it's a lot of work to do all those stones you know i've seen people <laughs> use um the uh like the vinyl that they use in bathrooms like if you ever go into a public bathroom there's often texture on the wall so that you don't notice uh -huh. those boogers and stuff <laughs> people use that for stone work and it works pretty darn well i've seen where people have taken that and made cobblestone that might be something to think about because mm. you know, that seems like a real pain having a hand carve all that but it looks awesome <laughs> yeah well it's it's not really like you have to carve it you just take a pencil and basically push in it but yeah uh, it's still a lot of work mm. yeah that's good but very cool that. cool how about you steven well i much like i started uh work gaming with little uh plastic soldiers and um you know, the, the cheap ones that came in the bags. And I think I finally had some G.I. Joe tanks and like a helicopter. Everything was out of scale, but I was like seven or eight, so I didn't really care that much. And then I played Dungeons and & Dragons, and then I tried to apply those rules to the army men. So I didn't actually know Wargaming was a thing. I thought I created it, you know, and I was like, <laughs> man, I'm the greatest. I created Wargaming. And then a few years later, someone was like, oh, that's kind of like Warhammer. And I was like, what's Warhammer? And then I realized that. I, in fact, did not create anything, and my rules were terrible, but that's okay. So uh, so I've pretty much been playing it, you know, since I was little, but I guess officially I think I started playing Warhammer when I was, I don't know, high school or something. And um, I didn't really like it at the time uh, all that much. So um, I like, I mean, I wanted to play something historical, so I found Flames War, and that's pretty much been my main game for a long time. But the uh, last few years I've been branching out a lot more. And I've recently been really getting into board games. I've been playing board games like crazy. Uh, as you can probably see my collection starting to blow up back there. I just had to buy another bookshelf because I ran out of space. I don't even know where I'm going to put the bookshelf. So <laughs> I need to buy another house just for board games or something. Yeah, I think that's a common uh, problem. Mm -hmm. you need to buy another house for all the terrain or the minis or the board games or the whatever. Exactly. There's way too much. Uh, so then I started... Um, my blog, WWPD, and that's ballooned up to having several websites and stuff now, which is fun. It's kind of my meta hobby, I jokingly say, because it's certainly not my real job. Uh, but I have a lot of cool people who help me out with it, and uh, we keep content coming out every single day. We keep a podcast coming out every two weeks for anyone who hasn't heard that who's watching this. And uh, it's a ton of fun to do, and we're looking forward to where it goes in the future. So that brings me here with you good. crazy guys trying to figure out what the heck we're going to do with this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Basically, talk about our hobbies, I guess, which could be a lot more wide, diverse than, than than just Flames of War yeah. and Saga and Bolt Action, which is what you guys mostly talk about. That's right. Yeah. Um, of course, we have Guy, who basically is into just about anything war gaming you can think of. Cool. Right. Well, let's say <laughs> Why don't we uh, why, why don't we do what we typically do on our podcast and talk about what we've been up to in the last couple of weeks or so? Guy, you want to start? Oh, I see. Take, take on me, why don't you? Okay, let's see. What have been doing in the um, past couple of weeks? Um, working on the um, concept for the um, Samurai game, or I should really say Ninja game for Salute. 
I mean, I've always been very keen to do um, um, demo games. Um, I think I started doing them about, crikey, about 10 years ago. You just sort of get hooked. And when I say demo games, I mean participation. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah this is a good thing to, uh, uh, to, to just interject. Sorry, sorry, Guy, but I think it's important to uh, emphasize that um, uh, I think more, in, maybe more in the UK than in the US, if you have a demo game in the UK, that means, you know, a couple of guys or a, a club have put together some awesome table and lots of minis and you know it may be a static display down to you know they made their own rule set and they're just showing it off and that's yeah am, am i it's, just, it's showing off really yeah. right guy it's a, yeah. the demo game is showing off uh it, it can be really awesome but it's uh and a participation game is you know it, it, the, the way that we like to do it is, you know, involve people and in showing them a new game or a new idea, something novel. And if you can make it look real cool, of course, at the same time, that's, oh, that's a bonus. Yeah, that's definitely a bonus. I think in America, if you go to a con, it's pretty much like everything is a participation game, right? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't think I've seen anything like what you describe as a demo game. I mean, typically you go, someone says, hey, this is, you know, X rule set. Here's how you play. Here's a printout for everybody. Here's what you're going to run. Now let's all play. So pretty much everything I've ever done like that or, or seen, I think has been a, a, what you would call a participation game. But what do I know? <laughs> anyway, Guy, no? I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, although I should say that there's generally good reasons why some people wouldn't want um everybody to play that game. I mean, like, you know, if they've got nicely painted figures or what have you. So I can understand there's, there's good reasons to have those concerns. Um, just to sort of cover yeah, kind of things. Yeah, so, yeah, effectively, yeah, I've, um, the, the game's roughly based on an old PlayStation game called um, Tenshu Stealth Assassin. Mm, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got it then. Okay, so as soon as I mention the word, see, if you've played the game, you know what we're talking about. Mm. And if you haven't, then it's a, a, yeah, I end up having to do a long winded um, explanation. Um, but suffice to say, yeah, um, we're, you know, play testing is going on nicely. And yeah, I think we've really got something. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be sending Jasper and yourself um, a sheet in the near future. And well, as for our readers, I'm afraid you're going to have to um, wait until um, WSS 67 when the uh, rules will be in there. Very good. Um, cool. Or Cup well. Salute, of course. Oh, yeah, God, yes. Um, salute or. Um, Hopefully we'll be running it at some um, parties and other shows around the country. So yeah, it's um it's nice. And also it's um it's a bit like um but uh, I made it my Rob Broom said, it's about giving something back to the hobby. And because um, you know, it's just sort of like um I'm doing demonstration games, uh, participation games I should say. Um yeah, having people come along, showing them new ideas and new systems and yeah, just also having fun because you know, I really, I really enjoy it. So um yeah, yeah I've totally. really had a good time every participation game I've both run and attended. People tend to be really laid back. Everyone seems to have a good time. So, Yeah. Um, let me see. What else I've been doing? Um, fairly recently, I've been um, well, basically returned to doing some Vietnam gaming. Um, I wrote an article in the last issue of Wargaming Souls and Strategy, um, which will be um, out um, in the show some soon, um, which is basically bolt action Vietnam. And um, cool. Yeah, I had to do uh, not that much tweaking with the rules, more with um, the actual um, stats because, well, effectively, it can be very lethal when you've got a lot of shots flying everywhere. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, again, that was um, good fun, and um, yeah. So now I'm, 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 I'll be more figures um, for Vietnam. Um, the trouble is, you see, is I've got um, my finger in too many pies. I mean. Um, I mean, but I feel, but luckily we're trying to arrange to have a big game for, well, basically to um, coincide with the um, Waterloo anniversary. Mm. So I've been coordinating, getting a bunch of guys painting stuff for that. Um, as I've got ancients on my table, which um, uh, need painting. I'm going to finish off my Carthaginian army and get around to doing um, a Republican Roman army. I'm getting when it's also someone who's got some decent plastic stuff for that. Um, and of course, with the samurai I'm painting. Because I'm not going to let Jasper and Christy get away with doing all the work for that. <laughs> um, Crikey, yeah. So the, my, my problem is it's kind of like, oh, um, uh, yeah, not enough fingers, too many pies. And so uh, um, you'll find 15 mil flames of war stuff. You'll find, um, oh, 28 mil um, in various scales. 
And also, yeah, a mate of mine's been getting back into doing um, um, the DBA, the Bellis Antiquatics, um, which is, yeah, nice, quick, fun game. And it's a bit like the um, board games. Just occasionally you'll turn up on a night and for some reason your opponent won't be there or things haven't quite worked out or have you. Then you'd either sort of break out the board game and the plan is to have um, just one or two DBA armies handy just so um, if I don't have a game or whatever, I can easily pick one up. So, yeah. So, yeah, lots, really. <laughs> well, that's, that's me. Okay, so how about you, Justin? Well, I, I, I've mostly been working on the Samurai um, Castle, as you might have noticed. Uh, I also want to keep going on my uh, American War of Independence um, 28 mil armies which is a bit slower because I'm a you know slowpoke painter who likes all the detail to be right. And today I played my first Flames of War game. Yay! All right. It, it was um, uh, with a friend of mine who he played um, version 2 a couple of years ago and never really got into it. And he was curious about it, see how it went in, in version 3. So he brought two small German armies. Because that's all we had. I yeah, I have some you know painted armor. Because I do you know I go oh this tank looks cool. I'll paint that and that one. Right. So I have you know bits of platoons, but nothing nothing useful. But we played two games. Um, well, uh, we had a lot of. Uh, he made sure we had a lot of variety. So we had some artillery. We had some armor. We had some anti tank. You know we so we played through most of the basic rules, which was was good fun. It it seems to be a game you can um, you can pick up pretty easily. You know, you, if you read the rules, it's, it, it, it does click pretty quickly. Yeah, the and basics are pretty easy to understand. I mean, it can get difficult when you get into a lot of the exceptions and things. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. If I, if I hear you guys in the podcast going, yes, and this, and this, and this, and you don't forget this, and, and this right. particular unit. Uh, but it's kind of, um, uh, it, it, I thought, we, would, we both thought it was pretty cool that you, even for a first game, you figure out pretty quickly that you need to have, you know, combined arms. You need to have figure out how things work together to make the, the thing work, and that makes it, you know, a pretty interesting puzzle type um, from the get go, which right. is good. Yeah, that was one of the things uh, when I was talking to the guys down there. You know, I'm a big fan of bolt action, but they were comparing Flames of War to bolt action. They were saying, you know, one of the things that works for Flames of War is you really need all of the pieces. You know, to kind of work together, and that's yeah. why the I go you go still really works for Flames of War. Whereas I think the not I go you go works really well for bolt action, but I think it's that level of granularity because in Flames of War you really need the artillery to smoke, you know, the HMG to pin, and then the infantry to follow up with an assault. And a bolt action, yeah. it's a little more separated. One squad can kind of do everything since it's more zoomed in, uh, you know, to the level of squad warfare. Yeah, so, but but that. Uh, I felt I haven't played bold action, uh, you know, probably a dozen times or so. Mm -hmm. uh, it felt a little bit like you, you you get more easily get a feeling like it is yeah, as you said, it's slightly more disjointed. You know, one unit can do one thing, one unit can do another thing, and doesn't feel as much like you really have to try and make everybody work together. Right, yeah, exactly. On the other hand, I really do like the fact that you're never bored. I mean, you draw a die, move a unit, shoot, and now oh, yeah. what's next. You know, I, I like yeah, that. I've, so it's a good trade-off. I mean, why not both? <laughs> the unit activation system in in, in a bolt action is really, it's a, that's a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. Really like that. Cool. So so you liked it pretty well, huh? Yeah, I liked soon? it. Yeah, we'll probably try and do it sometime soon again. He lives, uh, you know, uh, an hour away or so. So that means over here in Holland that you have to make an appointment weeks ahead. Um, we have a different um, idea about distances than basically any other country, any any country that's bigger than ours. Yeah, I drive an hour to work every day. So <laughs> uh, it's uh, uh, different mores when it comes to uh, distances here. Yeah. Cool. All right. Any any other gaming you've done recently you want to share? Mm, I don't think so. Just been been busy trying to finish my thesis and stuff like that. All right. Well, I guess uh, I've, I've actually gotten quite a bit of gaming in recently because I've got a bunch of board games in for my birthday, which is pretty cool. Oh, my yeah. Well, yeah, I must say, I saw yeah. that. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> you had quite a stack. 
Yeah, my parents blew blew me away. They uh they bought every board game I had on my uh, Amazon wish list, which is cool because you know once you have a kid, you don't really get anything for your birthdays anymore. So that was that was very generous. <laughs> Well, you know, you wait till she grows up, and then you can give her money to buy you gifts. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, so they got me uh, Zombicide. I don't know, have you guys seen that at all? I've played that quite a lot, actually. Very yeah, clever. We, yeah, I loved it. We played four games of it, and we had an absolute blast. I had some people over who weren't regular board gamers, and they caught on really mm -hmm. quickly, and they loved it. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And then I got the Eclipse expansion. And if you guys haven't played Eclipse... I absolutely adore that game. It's definitely not for everybody, though. I mean, it takes half an hour to set up and half an hour to clean up, but I just, there's something about Space Empires that really does it for me. <laughs> hmm. Well, the yeah. game I want to play was yeah. Rule of Thumb. Which what? Oh, right, that is the, one of the old SPI games, World War II. And I actually played it out um, by no, some mates of mine, set up in a room where nobody else could go, and we played it out the clunky. This would have been when I was, what, 18, 19? And we actually played SPI's World War II from beginning to the end. That's awesome. I did something yeah, similar. There was, there was one by, I think, Avalon Hill called World in Flames or something like that. And it was mm -hmm. another, you know, huge map. Actually, we set it up on a ping pong table in my parents' basement and took us, you know, two or three months. Finally, I think we got... <laughs> So we got, I don't know, three months into it, we weren't quite done, and we realized we were doing some of the rules wrong, and we were like, forget it, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got company here. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. John! Oh, Jack, hey, hey. Uh-oh. I'm keeping a dog ransom on my lap, because otherwise she's going to go bark at the dogs we can hear outside, so she's, I'm letting yeah. her sleep on my lap. Here you go. Here's the Th this, one, this one weighs 80 pounds. It's a bit too big to put on your lap. Hello, Scout. <laughs> what are you doing, Scout? She just woke up. She was totally asleep. What's going on? Here? She seems she seems more tolerant. Yeah, she's cool. She likes sleeping on my lap. I just don't always let her. Mm. But uh, so also got some Flames of War games in. Actually, we played a big city assault. We've been doing for probably a year now. Sean and I have been doing the uh, Firestorm campaign, the Bagration one mm -hmm. that they have. So cool. we finally played the next battle in that. That's pretty cool. That battle report will be posted. That'll eh, be posted by the time anyone watches this, I think. So it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was stupid. We had the German train, and we had all this Soviet armor. I mean, it was ridiculous, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was very fun when the train came rolling on. I mean, it's, that's just so stupid. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> um, ah, what else have I played? Let's see. Played. Oh, I got a game in on Kickstarter called Gunship First Strike, and it's a oh. speedship game. It's really cool. It's a. Uh, each side has a, a carrier. A, squadron of fighters and a gunship and your gunship mm -hmm. you get to totally customize you play cards kind of face down and you put it different weapons on it and so then you flip those up and you see what the other guy's ship has you see what my ship has and you basically battle each other while you're trying to get to the other guy's carrier to knock out his carrier it was a lot of fun we played two games of that it was uh it's a cool kickstarter it's always cool to see a just a card going. game no, or, it's, it's a board game. I'll, I'll post a review of it pretty soon here, but it's it's a board game with a bunch of cards and a bunch of pieces. Oh, okay. Really nice die cut, you know, cardboard pieces and all. A lot of fun because, you know, you get to sleep. I mean, it, it probably a year ago when I pledged to it, and he just now got it out to everybody. So you saw it go from the inception to the final, you know, glossy product. It was really neat to see. If it works. Yeah, yeah. and it did work, thank God, because I, I, I invested pretty heavily into it. Like I said, well, I'm a you, man of spaceship games. I mean, you know, if you if a Kickstarter doesn't work out, you get your money back, right? Are you are you not charged right. at all? Yeah. yeah, I meant if the game didn't work. You know, if the game sucked. Oh yeah, <laughs> but you're right. Man. I was a little worried. I got the and to be fair, the rule book could probably use some revisions because as we were reading the rules, we were like, uh, I don't know about this. This is, <laughs> seems kind of silly. But once we started playing, it all made sense, and we really liked it. So cool. Cool. God, I've been playing a lot of stuff lately. What else have I done? Uh, I've been playing a lot of EVE Online. Got sucked back into that. That's bad. It's oh, terrible. Oh, no. It's so bad. You need your soul. It, it truly does. Although you do get some painting done. You can see here I'm working on some T26s. Got a bunch of them on the board as my battalion uh, commander. And then I've uh, got hordes and hordes of the plastic Zvezda ones. I'm just working on a bunch of them at, at once. So you do get something done, but mostly it just wastes your life away. <laughs> oh, well, you know, yeah, gotta waste it away on something. That's right. If it's not that, it's another game. So that's cool. 
Yeah. That's pretty much it for me. Okay. Oh, one question. Sure. Um, did you play Dirt and Zombie Side? Mission yeah. 2. Have you completed Mission 2? Is Mission 2 the one where you start in one corner and you got to go kind of around and get to the other corner? That's right, yeah. And you've got, well, you start, start in the center and you've got ah. to get on um, um, four points and then get right. up the board on a certain way. We did finish that, but immediately afterwards we realized we missed a big rule. Uh, we missed the part where when you when you break a door open, the rooms fill with zombies. So we didn't yeah. play that. So we beat it, and we we're like, "This was kind of easy." And then that was what we missed. Up. <laughs> I tell you, it took us about um, five weeks to finish that. Off. We went it's... went back, and these guys were playing the game solidly, and <laughs> they finally worked out. Because we were like, you know, we what we usually do, as you see. Is we invite um you know if anybody turns up at the club just randomly if you want to join in the game then fine and so for the first couple of sessions we had these guys who were kind of like I'm gonna do something stupid and hack open the door and do some zombies and start like, oh <laughs> and we finally nice. got it into a, a system whereby we sent them all our group together we took out each um young target and finally get one person I think the girl with the skateboard to mm -hmm. zoom her way round and get to the finish. <laughs> with the water and um, the rice and other bits and pieces you need. Yeah, and that's a, it's a great up. game. Yeah, so many times trying to do that and just going and getting eaten every time. <laughs> yeah. When I played that, we played with a couple of friends of mine who aren't big board gamers and my father-in-law. He was up here because my wife had uh, oh, no. impact and wisdom tooth. And so he's not, you know, to him a board game is like Monopoly. And so I was explaining <laughs> it to him. You know, he had never really done it. But I'll tell you, by the end, he was like, no, guys, we got to go over here because he has the chainsaw. And I'll throw a Molotov cocktail over there. And then we'll bust the door down. It's like he was totally into it. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife called him later and said he, was, he kept talking about it. So I think he had a great time. I'll probably bring that to the next family gathering or something. <laughs> yeah, cool. It's a phenomenal game for anyone who has not tried it yet, though. Yeah, I'm a must have. Cool. All right, guys. Well, I'll tell you what. I think I, I'm pretty much tapped out on anything to talk about here until we start thinking through, you know, kind of a regular schedule for this. So let's consider this the test run. Yeah, I guess so. Anything else yeah. you guys want to discuss real quick? Well, well no. When's the next one? one? That's a great question. Yeah, we got to figure out how frequently we can do this. Mostly the time zone is, is hard. Yeah, it probably will have, well, I can, you know, I, I can do weeknights too, it's just going to be late, uh, which may impact my, um, or, or guy's usability. Right, you guys will be dead tired. Uh, yeah. Cool, well, we'll work that out off air, so people don't have to watch us discuss it through, but let's, uh, let's get this thing out there, and let, let people tell us what they'd like to see out of this, because this is a, kind of a new format for us, you know, doing video chatting about stuff across the globe yeah. you know stay tuned until next time well yeah you right. could you can we can easily think of things i mean we could gosh i mean we have the graphics now so you could perhaps we could see experiment with trying to you know discuss games or strategies in, in different games on on right. video um uh, how we do that i don't know but uh, we'll see yeah i think we can also wear dog masks that's uh, very important. We have dogs. We can have dog masks. That's right. What else do we Guy. have? Oh, a monocle. Oh, yes. How's that look? Oh, I see. Google Effects. Very nice. All right. I think we're devolving now, but let me... Oh, we'll start seeing... We just get some pie All right, guys. That was fun. So, until next time. Yeah. Until next time. <laughs> until next time. <laughs>